right, here it is. 1976 Bonanza C20. This will be my new project. It's just going to be a daily driver. It's got some rust. As you can see, I'm not going to cover it up or anything like that. The frame is pretty decent on it. It's really good. It's got brand new tires on it. Interior is really good shape as well. This needs a good cleaning for sure. 350 trans. Um, it needs some tune up work, so we'll do some tune up work. It's got the 14 volt rear end. You'll see some tune up work on this thing. First thing first, though, today I'm going to get it washed up and degreased. Then it's got a brake issue pulls to the right a little bit so I'll get that figured out and the choke is sticking I'll get the choke to come off then I can at least drive it around hopefully the brake issue won't be anything too crazy but um, once I get that figured out I'll drive it around a little bit there. it's really cool that it's a Bonanza C20 kind of cool later on I'll show you some documentation about this Bonanza C20 so very interesting facts that I didn't even know about oh and this truck is really cool because I don't know if you could see it very well, but it's actually got a wood bed in it in a 76. Thought that was kind of rare. Here's a before. Yeah, it's been sprayed with degreaser, but it's a pretty good representation of before. And here's the underneath. You can see the steering knuckles. They got some pretty good grease. That front plate has got some pretty good grease on it. So there's a good representation of before. I'll uh, show you guys after in a little bit. Alright, so I wanted to update you, show you a little before and after, give the pressure washer a break. So already looks way amazing. By the way, my degreaser I'm using is just some purple power. So here's a little bit of difference of before and after. Here's the after, there's before. There's the after, there's before. I have the whole rest of the truck to do and I know this side's kind of dirty because I was rinsing off the other side. But I got the whole this side of the truck to do. A mirror on this side. Everything on this side. I was washing quite a bit in the bed. I gotta pull that junk out of there and wash the rest of it. But that's starting to turn out really well. A lot of crap come off of this thing and there's still a lot more. It didn't quite get, didn't quite get the front as much as I wanted. Way better though. Let's see if I can avoid the water here. You can see there's still some there's still some crappy crap in there but the wheels turned out nice in fact this whole side of the truck over here turned out amazing big difference the white on the half cab looks really nice now big difference makes that rust look like it's not very much rust i didn't do the tailgate yet but did the rear diff a little bit that turned out pretty good but look at the crap i kind of washed it back now but look at the crap turned out to be a pretty nice day so far so maybe we will get to drive this thing a little bit hopefully the brake issue is something simple or something drivable so i can fix the choke and put around with it but even this grill which is kind of rare because it's not cracked but the rear part is these chrome strips with the emblem with the emblem and no cubic inch emblem a lot of these trucks had the cubic inch emblem but i think that was something weird with the bonanza when here's the mirror on this side that's just amazing how good it's coming out i can't wait to clean up the interior see what that turns out but right now i'm gonna do the other side of the truck but before i do that i'm gonna spray some more purple power under the hood or degreaser or whatever you want to call it finish the other side and then i'll wash underneath the hood but Right now, I'll pop open the hood and show you what that looks like a little before. 
here it is under the hood it's a little greasy sorry for about my shadows there's nothing i can do about it so yeah you can see i was blowing stuff around from the bottom but i'll purple power her again she's real greasy especially up here in the front of the motor that's orange underneath there so i'm gonna degrease it again i'll finish cleaning the outside and then i'll bring it back underneath the hood for when i do the after shot so you can see how much of a difference it really made All right, so I got everything washed I wanted to on the outside. Haven't touched the inside yet, but I will say I am pretty amazed on how this thing turned out. Even under the hood turned out really well. It's, you know, that's still black, but that's because I blasted the paint off. Look at the firewall. I just couldn't believe that. I just couldn't believe that. I see I got a few more things I actually got to rinse down on here. There's some dirt on the fuel pump. That's a brand new fuel pump. So I know it's not grease, but just this outside turned out amazing. It's, the paint is faded. Obviously the paint is faded, but once it dries, the truck will look way different than what it did before too. It just looks, it's unbelievable. It, the truck is straight too. That's another thing that I can't believe. Whoever had this must've took care of it. Cause it's straight. I mean, straight, straight. In fact, maybe if I can see it from here, no, I won't be able to see it from here. I was going to tell you how many miles it's got, but I see there's one dinger in the hood. That's the only dinger so far I've been able to find, and except on the driver's side, there's a little crinkle in the door. But I'm going to rinse rinse off this mirror and the roof because I see it's a little dirty and under the hood, and then I'm going to wrap this thing up, and maybe we can go to the shop and see what uh, what's wrong with the brakes and get her fired up. All right, so I threw a different battery in here for now. Now I'm gonna pull the air cleaner lid off, see if the choke is operating stuck or what's going on. Um, then if I have to, I'll wedge the choke open so the choke can wedge open. Then I'm gonna get this thing fired up. We'll get it off the lift. I'll quick clean out the interior. I even got another seat for it because this one's ripped. And then we will get this thing up in the air and see what's wrong with the brakes. All right, so at first I couldn't figure out what was wrong with the choke, but if you look at this carburetor, okay, I lift this rod right here, or this, this lever, and it closes the choke. When the motor's cold, it pulls this down with the little thermostat, closes the choke, it warms up, it opens up, right? And then, it, then when you give it gas, the, see now, I gave it gas, it sets once it warms up, and this lifts, you give it gas again, and then this comes down holding the choke. Now you can wedge this shut to leave the choke open, yada, yada, yada. Well, you look underneath here at this rod on the bottom, right there, the choke that controls, that, that moves, operates with the choke. Look at this one. Here's that lever. Look at the rod is right here. And if you hold it open, it doesn't open the choke all the way. Somehow they got this on the bottom side of this when this is supposed to be below here. Riddle me that one once. They had to really bend the shit out of that. So I, I popped this off here hoping that I can, you know, move it over and bring it down. But I'm gonna have to get something in here to bend this without breaking the carburetor and get that on the other side. And then the choke should operate and function correctly. So wish me luck on that one but i'm gonna try and do that real quick so i can get this thing fired up see how good it runs with the choke not sticking i was able to bend it back without breaking the carburetor it was close though it bent pretty easy so i was thinking when i went to bend it back i was thinking man this thing is gonna snap but it didn't so 
I'm gonna check the fluids. I'm gonna grab my flashlight, close the hood. I'll pull a pull a truck outside. Um, I might throw the battery charger on it for a few minutes while I'm checking fluids. Make sure that battery's good yet. All right, so as you can see, it's still not running right. Um, the battery, that works. Uh, it's missing pretty good. I don't know if I got a couple followed plugs or what I got going on. I see there's some white smoke. Let me grab a flashlight. I think it's just from it being warm. I don't know. What's really going on? Maybe I got a couple plug wires I bumped when I was washing it. Um, I don't know why it's not coming off the choke. I think that I got to wedge the choke open. I don't know if they're, the spring on the intake is broke or, or what the deal is. Um, so I'm going to check the plug wires, make sure they're all clamped on, clamped on right. I'm going to check the firing order, make sure that's right. Then I'm going to see if I can wedge the choke open and see if it runs a little better. I don't know how old the gas is in here, in here either, so I might run over to the gas station and fill it full with some uh, premium gas. All right, so far all I found was a couple plug wires weren't plugged in correctly, so that's why it was missing really bad. Then it was also popping very badly because there was a open nipple on a carburetor with no plug in it. I put this rubber line in here from another junk carburetor. Then I ran a new vacuum advanced rubber line because the old one was metal. I don't know if this was leaking very at all. It had some cracks in it. I decided to be safe and sorry. So now when it idles, it doesn't pop while idling. So I give it a couple revs. It's a little, little hesitant, but I think that's some old gas. So I'm going to get the air cleaner back on it, run to the gas station, get some fresh gas. All right, guys, sorry I ain't showing you under the hood. Um, so it was still kind of running like crap after I put the good gas in there. I pulled the cap off on the distributor. There was a lot of water and wear and erosion. So I put a new rotor and a new cap and coil in it. It runs a lot better now. It definitely needs some tuning. Um, I think I'm going to drive it like this for now, but eventually it's going to get a new carburetor and intake. I think the accelerator pump in the quadrajet is going bad every once in a while. It's kind of finicky, but... Um, and then when you step on it and it downshifts and it's really stringing it out, it kind of has like a a hiccup to it or a miss or a sputter you should i i could say but i think that's more or less because um it hasn't been driven in so long uh so i'm just gonna get some drive time on it and go from there but other than that i guess that concludes up the introduction to the new c20 project so we'll catch you on the flip side thanks for watching